Good afternoon. Uh, thank you for uh, attending this week's edition of Grand Rounds. Uh, please make sure to fill in uh, your name on the attendance sheet when you come in and pick up an evaluation form and complete that form at the conclusion of today's program. Uh, pleased to introduce uh, Dr. Beltroy from Blank Hospital. He is a pediatric gastroenterologist and he's got a fantastic presentation for us on ingestions in uh, children, uh, which is he, he's dubbed the child swallowed what, which I think is a fantastic <laughs> introduction to this topic. So please uh, join me in welcoming Dr. Beltroy. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you everyone. Uh, can you hear me clearly at the end? Back there, can you hear me well? All right, thank you again for the invitation. Um, I'd like to come here and talk to you guys. And I was asked about, um, if I can talk about foreign bodies, and this is the question that I asked the ER physician when they called me at two in the morning for a swallowed um, a foreign body. Okay. All right, I made some changes to the uh, presentation, so it's gonna be a little different than your handout. There's a lot of pictures, uh, which I think tell a bigger story. I'm trying to get used to this new thing. So let me know if you can hear me, okay? All right, so foreign bodies in the GI system are very common, and you will see some. I'll see more than you, but you will send me some patients. Um, more than 80% of the foreign bodies in humans happen in children. No wonder why. Uh, most of them between the age of six months and three years, usually the little kids, although the older kids and teenagers come to the ER and they have more interesting uh, foreign bodies, and I'll show you some pictures. Um, in most of the cases, it's a witnessed ingestion. However, it can be an incidental finding. I've had kids come into the ER with wheezing for a week, that is now responding to albuterol, and finally they decide to do a chest x-ray and then they find a coin or a foreign body in the esophagus. So we like the witness one because we can act fast. The unwitnessed, we don't know how long the foreign body has been there, so it's a little more tricky to get it out and may have more complications. So we like the controlled situations. So if you can guess, um, what do you think will be the most common foreign body ingestion in children? And you're right, coins are the most common uh, foreign body and pennies are the most common ones. I get many calls and saying that a two-year-old swallow a quarter, which is very, very difficult. And it's usually a penny or a, um, or a dime or a nickel. Just remember that when you shoot an x-ray, the x-rays don't go straight, they go like this, so the coin that is this big will, will appear bigger in the x-ray. Okay, so unless you have a, like the kid I got yesterday for, from Kathleen, a nine-year-old, who told me to swallow a quarter, you can't trust them. Well, sometimes you can, but um, it doesn't matter the size really, as long as it stays in the esophagus. But pennies are the most common um, coins that are stuck in the esophagus. Other foreign bodies, Button batteries, toys, magnets, etc. And we'll I'll show you some pictures about all the, the um, some of the page, some of my patients, and all, some other pictures that I have borrowed from other uh, people. Like I said, teenagers usually present with more interesting foreign bodies, a little more challenging. So, what do you do when you have a kid who comes to the ER or to your office saying, "I swallowed a coin," or parents said, "I saw him choking, and there was a coin there," and and, and they say he swallowed, he or she said he swallowed something. You want to get an x-ray, of course. And depending on where, um, if they're big enough to tell you where they have the complaint, but you want to do uh, uh, an x-ray that will include the neck, the chest, and at least the upper abdomen or neck and chest and an abdominal x-ray. Um, at least a PA. Now the lateral x-ray uh, is very helpful if you suspect there may be more than one foreign body, and there may be more than one that are stuck in a linear shape, so you only see the first one. So a lateral uh, will help you if, you, I'm not, if you're not sure whether they swallow one foreign body or more. But if the kid is old enough to tell you just one, then maybe a PA will be enough. 
If you have a, a suspicion whether it could be a battery or a coin or more than one magnet or things like that, then you want to take a PA and a lateral. And that will give you the location of the foreign body, uh, confirm the suspicion of what kind of foreign body it is and how many. And those three questions are very important because that will help me um, plan ahead of what I'm going to do when I scope one of these kits. The esophageal foreign bodies, um, most of them get lodged in the proximal esophagus, the thoracic inlet, and those coins are not going anywhere. Okay, so if I kit with a with a coin in the upper esophagus, there's really not much need to repeat an X-ray prior to doing an endoscopy. Those coins are not going to go anywhere. You have the esophageal sphincter proximal to the coin, and then you have the aortic notch distal to the coin. So those are not going to move. 10 to 20 will get stuck in the mid esophagus at the aortic ar um, arch, and those may go down. They will not go up, even if they vomit. The coin is not going to come out. Um, but they may go down, and only 20% will get stuck in the lower esophagus or lower esophageal sphincter, and those may pass into the stomach. So uh, as you wait for the pre-anesthesia fasting time, um, and these patients, you may want to get an egg, you may want to get an X-ray before doing the, the endoscopy because if it passes into the stomach, then you can wait. Increased risk for um, um, a, a persistence of a foreign body in the esophagus, previous surgery, kids who had T fistulas, uh, kid, a patient who have fund application. If you have esophageal diseases like eosinophilic esophagitis, and that's EOE. Um, or if a patient had a previous injury from a caustic ingestion or something like that, then there's a higher risk of that coin not passing into the stomach, so you have to go, you know you have to go and get it no matter what. It's not going to pass, even if it's at the end of the uh, esophagus. So I always ask previous surgeries. Kid who has a coin in the distal esophagus with a fund application, very unlikely to pass. So you just have to go ahead and get it out. How do you treat... Um, these foreign bodies, when you see this patient in the clinic, um, well, you have the option of calling GI, ENT, or surgery, depending on what you have available in your hospital or close to your hospital. Some people say that for the coins stacked in the upper esophagus, it's better to have a rigid scope, so ENT or surgery will be a better option. However, we take those coins out uh, usually without any problems, so we're happy to help you with those um, patients. How do we decide whether we can wait for um, the pre-anesthesia fasting recommendations or, we, or we have to go within two hours or right now or within 12 hours? Well, it depends on the symptoms and the foreign body. If the patient is unable to swallow uh, his or her own secretions for having respiratory problems, then we want to remove that coin or that foreign body as soon as we can because there is a risk of aspiration pneumonia with the poor handling of the secretions. There will be a risk of aspiration pneumonia during anesthesia induction when you put these patients to sleep to get the coin. So you have, no matter what you do, you still have that risk. So you want to relieve that obstruction and make the uh, patient feel better. So we usually go um, fairly quickly to get these coins out. If the patient has a little bit of a chest pain but able to swallow uh, his or her own secretions, then we usually wait for the appropriate pre-anesthesia pre fasting, six or eight hours, I guess, depending on what they ate and how much and how long ago and how symptomatic. So for those kids to come like at midnight or one in the morning, were awake and decided to swallow something, I may wait until six or seven in the morning before I get the coin out or the foreign body out. Uh, obviously a coin. Button batteries is a totally different issue. Those need to come out now. You can't wait. As soon as, as soon as you have a kid in the ER or your office with a button battery stuck in the esophagus, that kid needs to go to the ER right away. And at the same time, they have to notify us because we have to take that kid to the ER immediately. Whether they ate an hour ago or not, the risk of esophageal perforation and complications from that is way higher than the risk of um, aspiration pneumonia from vomiting during anesthesia. So that's 
probably the only emergent procedure for foreign body extraction. So button batteries immediately to the ER. You go now and we, when we take that kit to the ER, we, hopefully within two hours. You want to get that coin out within two hours of ingestion. It has been described that uh, after that, the risk of perforation increases. And the longer that battery is lodged in the esophagus, the more complications they may have, and they may need surgery. They may even die from um, mediastinitis and a lot of complications. So coins can wait a little, um, and sometimes even up to 24 hours. Um, but batteries are an emergent situation. Just remember that, please. Sharp objects, we try to get them as soon as we can, of course. Um, because of the risk of perforation, there may be some exceptions. Uh, straight pings, um, the trailing point will, un will, be un will unlikely perforate the intestine, so you could potentially wait if they're in the stomach or if you do an endoscopy and you can't reach it, it's already in the small intestine. It will probably go down without any complications. But if, the, if it's not a straight pin that has a head that will pull the point, um, then the risk of perforation goes up. So you want to get the sharp objects. Uh, as long as they're uh, in the, within the reach of a scope, you want to get them out as soon as you can before they move into the small intestine. Now, having said that, 80 to 90% of the foreign bodies will pass without any complications, okay? And I'm sure we've missed many foreign bodies ingestion because they can choke a little bit and it goes into the stomach, it's a small coin, it will pass, they will not check the stool, and I'm sure there are many of them that we don't see. 80 to 9 percent will go without complications. Maybe 9 or 10 percent uh, or 10 to 20 will have to uh, be removed endoscopically, and less than 1 percent will need surgery. And again, that depends on the foreign body, but most of them will pass, which is, which is good. If you find a foot impaction that is usually associated with an underlying esophageal problem, and in most of the cases, it's uh, related to eosinophilic esophagitis, where a patient, you know, it's very not very common to see a kid has um, an esophageal stricture from reflux unless they have uh, T fistula or they have a narrowed, uh, um, I mean, a congenital web or uh, a vascular ring. It's most likely associated with eosinophilic esophagitis. So, foot impaction can happen in normal people if they don't chew well, or in teenagers, I guess, older teenagers, if they're intoxicated with alcohol or drugs. Um, but usually it's related to eosinophilic esophagitis. So at the same time we remove this impaction, we usually take biopsies. This is a penny in the proximal esophagus, stay there for um, just a few hours, the patient was asymptomatic, so we waited a few hours before we uh, put this patient to sleep. And you can see um, no erosions or erythema or, or edema and anything in the area where the coin was lodged. This is another coin who was there for maybe six or eight hours. and. In general, you may not see anything until after maybe six hours of the coin being lodged there. However, I've seen kids with maybe four hours having a coin in the esophagus and you get a little irritation. It depends on the size of the esophagus and the size of the coin. But again, this coin was there for a few hours. You see what we call kissing, ul um, kissing ulcers for erosions. This is where the coin was lodged and a little bit of edema around it. So it's a superficial erosion. It looks very deep. It's really not deep. It's just edema around the area of pressure from the coin. Another coin, same story, you get um, erosions or restorations on opposite sides. This will heal uh, without any complications. It's, it's not a circumferential um, inflammation, so very unlikely to give you a stricture. They will heal on their own without any intervention. Sometimes I tell the parents to keep these kids on a soft diet for a week um, and occasionally maybe some caraphate just to cover that area, but usually they heal on their own very quickly. 
another coin who was there i don't remember exactly how long probably you know we usually get these coins uh within 12 hours most of the time within six to eight hours which will be the waiting time for anesthesia and it look it looks pretty good in this picture not to look here and part of this erosion is from um um, trying to pull the coin. Sometimes these coins are stuck in the esophagus, so if you have a little bit of swelling around it, you have to kind of plane around a little bit and you may erode um, um, that mucosa. But again, it, this is a very uh, superficial erosion. Another penny, it's a small coin, but this was a, a small kid. Um, I think this kid was like eight months or nine months or something like that. Um, so you see more erosions than this kid. This um, little kid had some dysphagia after I scoped him. I had an upper GI, which was normal, didn't show any strictures or anything like that. Unfortunately, the patient got uh, lost to follow up before I could re-scope him again. Um, looks a little deeper. However, there were no, um, there were no uh, leaks. A coin could erode the esophagus and produce and it's of a gel perforation, but it has to be there for a long time, many hours. Though it usually happens if you have it for more than a day, and in the cases of unwitnessed um, ingestion and when they come with respiratory symptoms and then you get an x-ray five or six days uh, later, that's when the risk of perforation increases. But so far, I personally have not seen a perforation with a coin. It could happen. This is an AP picture of um, a coin. You see homogeneous, um, an homogeneous whitening of this foreign body. It's important to look at this uh, the x-ray very closely. And if it's a small kid who can't tell you what happened, then you may want to get a lateral. How do you know this coin is in the esophagus? The face of the coin is facing you. When it goes into the trachea, you see the edge of the coin. Occasionally, a coin in the sufferer may take that position and you will see the edge and not the face of the coin. But if you see the edge, then that coin is more likely to be in the trachea than in the esophagus. Then you have to call your ENT or your pulmonologist to get that coin out. But you may get um, surprised. Sometimes there's more than one coin stuck together. Um, this is a little kid who swallowed a piece of a keychain, and this is an older kid, I can't remember the age, who um, choked on something. He couldn't tell me what it was, and he had a little pain in, the, in his throat. And as soon as I put the scope, this is right at the entrance of the esophagus, a big ant there, and a little bit of edema, but nothing else. So somehow he swallowed a little, <laughs> well, it was kind of a big ant and got stuck there in the just right at the entrance of the esophagus, and that's what was bothering him. And I know you're having lunch, um, so we'll pass, this, we'll pass this quickly. Food impaction, ring appearance of the esophagus, a lot of inflammation typical of eosinophilic esophagitis. The food impactions are, are um, they, they usually need an endoscopy. Very rarely will resolve on their own. Some kids may be able to vomit uh, um, the piece of meat, which usually meat out, and they may do it two or three times, but at one of those times they'll come to the ER and they won't be able to do it. Uh, in some ERs, you use glucagon, which will relax the lower esophageal sphincter and may help, but um, there are no, no studies to prove that. So, you could use it because it's pretty safe. However, I don't think that uh, should delay calling the GI to do an endoscopy. So personally, I think you, just, you should just call the GI because these kids will need an endoscopy sooner or later. Now, we're grateful for the ones who come in at 1 a.m. and they give them glucagon and passes and you can scope them as an outpatient. So, but usually glucagon doesn't work very well for these kind of food impactions. Uh, we need to get the, um, the meat out. We try not to push it because we don't know what's underneath or behind that food impaction. It may be a narrowed area that if you go and push the food and pass the scope, 
and you dilate that narrow area, it can break. So it can take an hour and a half or two to get these piece by piece if, if you don't have enough space or the right equipment to remove these foot impactions. So those are, those are the, the hardest um, foreign bodies to get out. They take a long time, they're nasty, um, they're difficult. And then we take uh, biopsies. And this is um, how a lateral view can help you decide whether it's one or two objects or it's not a coin and it's a battery. You can see the bulge here. There's a little bulge here. So you know it's a button battery that needs to be removed um, then now. So foreign bodies in the stomach, most will pass without complications, like I mentioned. Um, so what do you do when you have a battery? You know, a coin will pass. We don't worry too much about the coin unless it's, a, say, a two-year-old with a quarter in the stomach. That coin will probably not pass because of the size of the coin relative to the size of the pylorus at that age. So you may still have to go and get that coin, but it's not emergent. Um, but what do you do about the batteries? Batteries in the esophagus, no question about it. Those need to come out immediately. Goes into the stomach, well, let's, uh, let's assess the patient. If the patient is symptomatic, if he's having pain or any symptoms that may be related to the coin and it's still in the stomach and the, and, and the patient um, last ate many hours uh, before and you could probably go to the OR within the next hour or two, then we want to go and try to get that battery out. If the patient is asymptomatic and, and it's a small battery, then you could wait. Um, but you have to get daily x-rays. You get an x-ray the day after and see if it passes into the small intestine and then follow that and, and check the stools. If, if within two days the, coin is still in the, the battery is still in the stomach, then we need to go and get it out. Can you still hear me there in the back? Okay. Okay. Again, the size of the foreign body is very important. Um, coins or battery or objects that are bigger than two centimeters are unlikely to pass the pylorus. Maybe in a teenager, but it's a kind of a borderline. So 20 millimeters or two centimeters and above, which is a quarter and up, may not pass the pylorus. They're not going to go, so you want to go and get them out. The bigger the battery, the, the, the worse the complication. There are, the, there are more um, toys now using the three volt 20 millimeter battery, that, which is the size of a nickel. Those batteries are very potent. That's why they're being used more, because they last longer. And we see more and more of those battery, battery ingestions and, and complications. So if it's a battery that is 20 millimeters or more, it needs to come out even if it's in the stomach. It's not only not going to pass, but it can give you a lot of erosions. So size and symptoms determine how fast or how soon we want to go and get that coin out. Sharp obje objects, again, depends on the size and the shape and the location. Like I said, sharp objects, we try to go in as soon as we can to get them out. Once they pass uh, the stomach, we can't reach them with the scope. So those need to be followed daily and um, be able to look for signs of perforation. Uh, long foreign bodies, longer than five centimeters, they're not going to make the C loop into the denum. They're not going to pass. So even if they're thin, if they're long, they're not going to make that loop. So you have to go and get them out. They're not going to move. So as you can see, every patient is different. It then depends on what they swallow how many four bodies and what the size and shape and all that. So we assess every patient differently. Magnets um, are a separate topic. We're seeing more and more of these magnets. Um, if the kids swallow, and magnets are everywhere, and they're, they're in many toys. So you will see some of these ingestions and probably more frequent. If, if the kid swallows one small magnet, um, as long as it's not stuck in the esophagus, you could wait, again, depending on the size and the shape. You wait for the magnet, you check stool, you follow that magnet um, 
with several x-rays. If it's a neodymium, neodymium magnet, which is very strong, then you want to advise the, the parents not to use any belts or metal things on their kids' uh, clothes and not get close to any other magnetic uh, things. And you want to check every stool and, and follow with daily x-rays and make sure that the magnet passes. If it's one magnet, it usually passes without complication. The problem is if, if you swallow more than one or if you swallow a magnet and another metal object, those can get, um, and then you can get into trouble. If those magnets need to come out as soon as possible, um, within the reach of the scopes, of course. If they're in the stomach, then you need to go as soon as you can to get those magnets out of the problem is, and mainly with the neo diamond magnets is that those little small magnets, although they have different shapes, um, they are five or 10 times more potent than a regular magnet. So if they, if they, if they go into the digestive tract, um, separate, they may, they may uh, in the stomach, they may, they may join with a gastric fold in between and may create a perforation and a fistula, and they are in trouble. If they go into the small intestine, even if they swallow one, one goes down and the other one goes following, and, but not together. They can be, one can be the duodenum, the other one can be lower in the jejunum. They're so potent that they're gonna put, they're gonna pull intestine in between them, okay? And then you can have intestinal obstructions, you can develop fistulas, you may have perforations of magnets. Uh, although they're not gonna uh, they usually don't have lead or anything like that to create intoxication. They can create a lot of trouble. So these magnets, you have to get them out as soon as you can. So again, somebody swallowed a coin, you get a, a magnet, you get an x-ray, you contact us. We call us, or you send the kid to the ER, depending on how many and how is the kid looking. Um, these are the neodymium magnets. Um, they come in different shapes and sizes. These are, the, these are sold as adult toys, and you can make them in different shapes and things like that, but they are very attractive to kids. So you have to be careful. They are extremely strong. Um, Three-year-old who swallowed five um, magnets, you go into the um, stomach and you only see three, but then you retroflex the scope and you see the other two on the other side of a gastric fold, and this is what I was telling you. Okay. They're very potent, but somehow they got, they, the kid didn't swallow the five of them at the same time, of course, and then when they got into the stomach, they got together with a skin fold in the middle. And this kid didn't perforate, but has some superficial um, ulcerations in those areas. But you want to, and that's why you want to get them out as soon as you can. So is this a battery or a coin? This is not a very good x-ray, but if you were to look closer, you will see that um, there is a little rim here. There is a difference um, in the appearance that makes you think that this is likely to be a battery and not a coin. These are different sizes of a battery and a coin, and this is how they look in the x-ray. This is a coin where you see a homogeneous whiteness. This is a battery where you see that rim from the, um, this rubber thing, you see the rim, and you see the bulge on the lateral uh, x-rays. Now, this is a thick battery, so if you take an AP x-ray, you may think it's a little coin or a rounded object, but if you get a lateral, you'll see the bulge, and then you know it's a button battery. So the um, lateral x-rays are very helpful, especially in younger kids who don't know why they swallowed. Okay, so AP and lateral. You want to you want to be able to differentiate between a coin and a battery because you know you have to be, um, um, you have, the batteries need to come out very, very soon. This is a little battery in the stomach, stayed there for a few hours. It was still in the stomach. The kid was MPO for several hours. I decided to go and take the chance to get it out. And there was a, there was some erosion in the, in the uh, gastric fundus. Some of this is also from um, putting a net, try to grab the battery and pull it out. 
but there was some superficial erosions in the stomach from the battery. This is, an, this is a bigger battery, also came out from the stomach. You can see just a little bit of an erosion here, so it varies. You can't tell who's going to do what, even if it's big or small, the battery. So you, if they're in the stomach and you have the chance to take it out, and you want to do it just for, at least for a, a peace of mind. But you know, because you, you never know when these kids are going to have um, a significant erosion or ulcers or a perforation. This is a coin stuck in the pylorus. This kid, if you have a coin in the stomach, you can wait up to four weeks. Most of these coins will pass within four to six weeks. I like to wait four weeks, but if by the third week the coin is in the esophagus, that's when I see the kid in the clinic and schedule the endoscopy um, for that week and get an x-ray prior to endoscopy and see if it passed. But you can wait up to four weeks as long as they're asymptomatic. If, like this, the coin gets stuck in the pylorus, they may have vomiting and distension. So those kids need to be scoped uh, sooner. The coin will change color. A very, if it's only one coin, very unlikely to give you any problems. The penny has a lot of zinc, so there is some potential zinc toxicity. However, one coin or four weeks is probably not going to do much. If you were to measure zinc levels, you may find it a little elevated. It will go down immediately as soon as you take the coin. So we could wait if there is many coins, then that's a different story. But usually we don't get those. Those are seen mostly in the um, adult world, patients who have psychiatric problems, that they swallow many things at the same time. Except for one exception that I'll, sh I'll show you in a, in a couple of minutes. So what else do these kids swallow? A nut. It was... Um, the key was that this was uh, an infant. Um, I can't remember how old was this uh, kid. Maybe two years, a little younger than that. Although the nut small will pass on any of us, it will be too big for the size of the pylorus at that age. And it was stuck in the pylorus here. So it's a little tricky to pull it out of the pylorus and then grab it and, and, and pull it out. Um, screws, again, it has a little, has a head that will usually, tra will usually make the point, the point trail, so it, less risk of perforation. However, if it's in the stomach and you can scope that key within an hour or two, then might as well just go and do it and get that out. So the risk of perforation will be zero. And this is a, um, 15-month-old who was admitted to the hospital for respiratory uh, problems and got a chest x-ray and they saw a coin. They called me and say, well, we don't know if it's a coin or a battery. We don't know for how long he's had it. And from this x-ray, you may think it's only one object, but if you take a closer look, you see there is a, a tiny indentation here and there. And if you use your imagination, you may see a little line here. So there were two pennies uh, stuck together. Just by gastric secretions, they get stuck together and it may look like one. So you will, may want to get again an AP and a lateral x ray so you're prepared um, when you're doing an endoscopy. This is, a, uh, I think, a 13 or 14 year old, my patient with developmental delay. Um, her dad is a big fishing guy, loves to fish. One day, his um, um, tackle box fell on the floor, open, and this girl is so fast. She's always um, put things in her mouth since she was a baby. She grabbed fishing lures and swallowed them. And this is the x-ray that we got in the... Um, can't tell how many of them. Well, we, we, it took me a long time to get all these out and there were 33 weights and fish and lures. So it took a while to get this out. Now, if you look here, she also had some <laughs> more foreign bodies in the cecum, right? Um, now these um, were removed probably within a week, maybe seven or 10 days after she had swallowed them. 
they were not going to pass, so we went in and got all those out. Of course, she wasn't prepared for a colonoscopy, and since these, these were in the colon, I waited a little longer uh, to get those out. Um, this girl had lead uh, intoxication from the weight, and she had to be chelated. So we don't see very frequent, uh, very frequently these kind of problems, but in the adult world, you will see them because the psychiatric patients may swallow all these. This is a little girl with developmental delay, and she swallowed things her entire life. But this is the only patient I've seen so many things in the stomach, besides that trichobezoar, of course. This is a 17-year-old young lady, and there's something there, but you can't tell, probably. Let's take a closer look. Can anybody guess what did she swallow? Any guesses? You'll be surprised. This is what she swallowed. This young lady had a lot of trouble with bulimia and anorexia and she was making herself gag and swallowed uh, a toothbrush. So we got that out. Um, it actually wasn't that hard. You just grab the handle and pull it out and it comes out right away. So it's, it actually wasn't a, um, a difficult uh, endoscopy. But then six months later, they call me from the ER again. I say, we have this girl, and you can't see it very well because it's right uh, in front of the spine, but yeah, there you go again. You see the bristles. And she swallowed another one six months later. And I was on call again, so I knew her very well. Uh, this young lady had a lot of trouble. She's turned 18, so we haven't seen her um, back. But uh, it's very likely that she'll come to her local ER with some kind of foreign body. Sad story, but anyway, they, this is what you see in teenagers. You see it's a different kind of foreign body. So what else do they swallow? What else have I seen? This is another teenage girl without any diagnosis of an eating disorder. She said she was scratching her throat with a spoon and she swallowed it. Of course, my suspicion was that she had anorexia or bulimia. And it was a small spoon. Again, not really hard to get it out, but... Yes, these kids swallow a lot of things. Straight pins, you are concerned about the risk of perforation. That's why you want to get um, sharp objects as soon as you can. So, uh, 17-year-old, I think, or 15-year-old young man who had the habit of putting a guitar pick every time he was playing his guitar. And lo and behold, he swallowed it. It went into the stomach. And this was, it took me like 40 minutes to try to get it out because it's a smooth, there's, there are no edges that you can grab, and it's all slimy and, and slippery. So it took me a while to get, till I got in the right position to get it out. Um, foreign bodies in the colon, we don't see very many. The ones that we see are the ones who were swallowed and, and didn't pass into the colon, and they're not moving anywhere because they're probably heavy or too many. Um, not in, like in the adult world where you see a lot of foreign bodies in the rectum. We don't see them very often, in, at least in children. You may see them in, in the adolescents, but very rarely, likely. Uh, little kids, we see them, the ones who swallow, but they didn't move past the cecum. And when to remove them, it depends on the object, the size, the number, and the progression of the movement. Um, this is the, the girl that I told you removed the 33 fishing lures from the stomach, and she had a whole bunch of other foreign bodies in the cecum. We took um, daily x-ray for two or three days. They didn't move despite goat lightly clean out. You see all the air here from uh, NG and goat lightly. So we went in, did a colonoscopy, and she had a bunch of weights and lures, and I don't know what is this. She has a G tube, but I, I don't know, maybe she pulled her G tube and swallowed that little thing, plastic thing. Anyway, it took a long time to get this out because you, you couldn't get all at the same time, so you had to do several passes to get these objects out of the colon. This is a young man with uh, autism who swallowed magnets. The magnets were in, 
it's hard to tell where they are. They may be at the end of the small intestine or in the colon. I recommended uh, an x-ray the day after and called me. I never got a call. I, he got lost to follow up, um, unfortunately. I don't know what happened. So I assume they passed or somebody else has scoped them. Uh, but this is a kid who you will get an x-ray and if you, within 48 hours they're not passed or not moving anywhere, you wanna go and get them out because they may look like they're all stuck together. It doesn't mean there isn't a loop in between them. This is a young lady, again, she was playing with a couple of these uh, rare earth or neodymium magnets. She put two in her tongue just to pretend she had a piercing and whoop, swallowed them. <laughs> yeah. So they went, although they're small, so they will probably go down. And they did go down until the cecum, but they stayed in the cecum for like three or four days. So I went in and and did a colonoscopy and I went all around the colon. I got to the cecum and didn't see the magnets. And I said, oh, I should have taken an x-ray. Maybe she passed them or maybe they're in the appendix, which could happen and it has happened. These little magnets can go into the appendix and then you need a surgeon to get them out, of course. So I said, well, where did they go? Let me get an x-ray. So while she was with the uh, scope inside, I took an x-ray. And there, are, there is some uh, metal in the scope. So that's why I didn't see him. You can see him right here. So I pulled the colonoscope to the rectum. They fell off and then grabbed them out. So it could happen. I want to bring your attention to uh, one foreign body that luckily we're not seeing very many, but we'll probably see more and more because these toys are everywhere. They use them for little uh, toy guns or um, little toys that put these things in the water and grow. They have different colors, very attractive to children. They can make jewelry. They can be used in a vase for decoration or with plants because they retain water. And these acrylic acid and uh, acrylamide substances are super absorbent polymers. So they capable of absorbing water and may have a substantial growth in size. They can grow up to a hundred times their weight in water. They can get huge. There's a case describing a name mantle who swallowed one only, and it went from this size to this size and needed to have surgery for obstruction. So even if you swallow one, you're not gonna see it in an x-ray, but if you, but if they call me from the yard, ER, I think it may be that I'm not gonna see it in an x-ray, I kind of obligated to go and take a look at least until I can reach through the scope and see if I see this thing. And if I don't see it, may not may have never been swallowed, but that patient is to be followed very closely for potential obstruction. And hopefully you won't see them, but there are there are more and more available. So we have to be in the look for these kind of toys. So in conclusion, all the esophageal foreign bodies require removal within tw 12 to 24 hours. Batteries uh, require emergent removal in the esophagus, in the stomach, well, as soon as you can. Um, magnets need to be removed as soon as possible if, if they swallow more than one, and of course, if endoscopically possible. And the gastric foreign bodies depends on the object, the size, the size of the patient, and the number of the foreign body. So each patient needs to be individualized. But we're happy to help you. Uh, call us if you have any foreign body any questions that you, you may have, even if it's in the stomach and you think you know what you, you do, just let us know because in case you call us three weeks later they're still in the stomach, we, we can see the patient in the clinic and, and have everything ready and set up for endoscopy. All right, thank you again for your attention and if you have any further questions, I'll be happy to take them. Any questions? Yes. Well, the batteries. I assume it's the electrical, the the short circuit. The battery gets hot, or the or it's the current between the the uh, the two poles of the battery that causes the problem. What? The saliva will uh, make cur will make will produce a current between the two poles, and that will break the seal and. Um, 
hydroxide uh, substances will come out and erode the esophagus. The coin will be by pressure. If it's a big coin, the esophagus will press into the esophagus and create some necrosis, but the battery is the sodium hydroxide or other hydroxide components that will burn the esophagus. Any other questions? All right, well, thank you very much for your attention.